and welcome to another Three String Scar Box Guitar Lesson. I'm Sean from Coda Guitar and uh, this is just following on from the pentatonic uh, lessons that we just uh, finished off a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I thought it'd be quite useful to have a little look at the sort of basic theory behind um, scales um, and how uh, you can sort of switch between different scales, how the five note pentatonic scales relate to uh, the sort of normal seven note ones that we kind of create chords from, uh, difference between major and minor scales, that kind of thing, uh, how you can use them for improvising and uh, sort of creating stuff on uh, the three string guitar with this particular tuning, which we will just have a quick look at right now. So it's the standard um, G, D, So, um, as Brett would always say, that's a G power chord. Uh, so it's really uh, useful to sort of stay, it's the easiest um, thing to do is to stay within the key of G. So everything um, is gonna be relating to uh, G. Um, this particular um, lesson, we're, we're, we're gonna be looking at the major, um, different types of major scales first, um, just because uh, even though we actually use in like, you know, roots, blues, classic rock, we use like minor pentatonic blues scale a lot, but um, when you are actually looking at, at the, the, the you know the basic theory behind the scales, it's actually better to start with major scale because everything else is sort of derived from that. Uh, so the second uh, video, which will be coming this way very soon, we'll be looking at the, the different minor scales. And um, there's a there's a PDF download um, as as always, uh, but um, this is um, it's not actually a, a score. It's, um, it's 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 a bunch of different scale patterns. So uh, the seven of them in total, the majors and minors are all in one PDF. Uh, you can go to codetuition.com or you can follow the link above or below and um, be uh, really appreciated if you consider downloading it, um, support the channel, but also it's very useful because um, you can you can play uh, like really create some quite sort of contrasting sounds depending on which scale you pick uh, and um, we've, we've got them um, <coughs> laid out so it's just like the entire fretboards um, uh, just so you, you can see where all the notes are, but um, for sort of practical use um, in, in like three different positions, so we can play down here, we can play in the middle, we can play up there, and, and, and so you can play across the strings uh, as, as well as just in a sort of linear way up and up and down. Um, so, you know, maybe if you're playing slide, going up and down. <laughs> Is, is quite it's quite useful uh, you know just upon one string but if you're using your fingers you might want to like shift between strings and sort of stay in one one position um, so um, what we're doing is um, we're looking at how you break up the octave okay um, that's the important thing um, so an, an octave is just the same note but higher so just just on one string uh, open string one's a G fret 12 is also a G so uh, that's just the start of the new octave if I had enough frets I could find the second octave up there somewhere um, and uh, like in, in normal Western music, we divide the octave into 12 equal uh, notes, equally spaced notes. Um, so e each note is, is one fret apart, um, but the, 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 the spacing is, is entirely uh, e equal. So they're called semitones. So on, on a guitar, it's just one fret. So that, that's the first note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That is back to G, so that's not the 13th note. That would be like starting again. Okay. Um, chromatic scales, good for like finger exercises and stuff, a bit like what I just did there, but they're um, not brilliant for sort of creating, you know, in interesting music. Um, they're, they're quite sort of limited, just sounds a bit wonky. It's like a, you know, like fairground ride or something. Um, so what we do is uh, we just select specific notes uh, from those 12. And um, we're going to start with the seven note uh, major scale because that one um, is, is like just the sort of foundation of everything, basically. Um, so if a semitone is one fret, then a tone is two frets. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of going up by a tone uh, or, or semitone, uh, starting on the G and finishing on the high G. So we've got G, that's the first one, upper tone, fret two, up another tone to fret four, up another tone to fret five, up another tone 
to fret 7, up another tone to fret 9, another tone to fret 11, and then finally up a semitone to the octave. So we've got open 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, 12. Okay, so that is a major scale, just up one string in a sort of linear way. Um, and uh, what notes have we selected there? Well, we've got um, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Okay, um, so uh, that is giving us a major scale. We can let that ring. sort of pleasant melodic sound to it. So as well as talking about um, the, the, the notes in the scale, uh, we, we can also uh, look at the intervals in the scale. Now th this, this is dead easy because um, it's just like counting to seven, seven notes in the scale, so there's, the, there's like seven intervals. Uh, the first note being the root note, that's, that's a G, so uh, it's the distance between the root note and any of the other notes in the scale. So the second note in the scale, that's classed as a second. The third note in the scale is classed as a third. The fourth note in the scale is a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and an octave. So it's getting bigger each time. And because um, it's a major scale, uh, th this is important when we um, go on to the, the minor scales in the next um, video. Uh, we class that as a major second. This is a fret there, which we could potentially put in as a different one. Um, we go to a major third, which is fret four. We go to uh, a fourth and a fifth. Now, these uh, aren't actually major intervals because they are, um, e the best way to think of them is they're like neutral intervals. So um, you, you can uh, find them in minor scales as well. So uh, we call it a perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Uh, but then when we go back to the sixth and the seventh, that's a major six, that's a major seven in the octave. Okay. That is intervals, and um, what's happening on the uh, tab, the, the score, sorry, um, the, the PDF file, is um, we're, we're, we're just looking at um, how we can play these uh, in, in, in different places. Um, so we can play them in a linear way up one string. Um, so. Uh, We've got G, A, B, C, D, E, because you know, anything we play down here, we can play on exactly the same frets on string three, because they're both, both G notes, aren't they? So they've got to be the same notes on, on every single fret. Uh, however, in on the, the, the middle string, we've got um, D, and we can go to E, which is fret two, F sharp, fret four, G, which is fret five, a fret 7, B fret 9, C fret 10, and then D fret 12. Okay, so, so you, you can just practice like moving around, and like, like I said, if you're playing with a slide. Um, middle string. Uh, but um, if you want to play, uh, you know, in, in specific fretboard positions, um, what uh, how, how things are written out on the the, the, the PDF score is um, we've got um, one position down here. So first of all, it's it's mapping out the entire fretboard. But then we've got one position down here, which is fret two, fret four, fret five, off the open string. Then we're going to open D and then fret 2, fret 4, fret 5, and then we're going to, that's actually the same note, that's fine, we'll start again, 2, 4, 5. So that's, that's a really nice um, pattern, same frets across all the strings. So I can do quite a lot with that, you know. Um, 
and uh, we're playing different places, you know, so it's, it's, it's going up to the middle position where uh, we can maybe go for three notes per string, so we can go five, seven, nine, four, five, seven, four, five, seven. Um, maybe in the high position we could go, um, I'm going to have to go nine, Sorry, 7, 9, 11, 12 here. So I could either use all four fingers or you might find it easier to do a little shift from 11 to 12. On the middle string, I'm just uh, playing 7, 9, 10, and then same as down here, up here. Different sort of finger positions. And um, you know, again, just sort of droning away. Um, I can even play across uh, quite a good um, sort of exercise. You can play across two octaves, so that would be open two, four, five, open two, four, five. Shift up on that string, seven, nine. 7, 9, 10. Okay. So that's the major scale. Um, taking two notes away creates a major pentatonic. That's what we were looking at in previous videos. So we're going to take away the uh, fourth note, which is the C, and the seventh note, which is the F sharp. So we're left with G, A, B, D, E, G. What's the point of that? Uh, well, you're left with a very sort of strong, sort of positive sound. Um, less kind of subtle, less com complex, but um, very sort of strong, sort of, you know, nice, nice, bold melodies, no, no sort of faffing around. Um, so uh, great for, you know, blues or country or, you know, whatever, classic rock. Um, and and um, also the physical shapes uh, that are, are left when you uh, take two notes away. Um, you're either one or two frets apart between the notes when you're playing a um, major scale, but you take two notes away and you're now either two or three notes apart when you're playing a pentatonic scale. And so that just the, the, the physical distance, you, you, you will end up playing differently and so you'll create different licks and so you'll it, it, it makes you more versatile, basically. Um, so, you know, you might do more sliding because three frets up's a bit of a stretch. So, you know, or maybe bounce off the open string or something just to be able to get up to the next note when it's a big jump. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that 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 works nicely. Um, the open position, uh, as in um, with the open strings, we've got open two, four, open two, five, open two, four. Um, spot the bass line. Bit of uh, classic Motown there, so I, don't, I doubt whether you played it up on one string, but it's um, that um, My Girl bass line is, is used in the uh, entire major pentatonic scale. Works really well. Uh, yeah, so all, all, all of the different um, scales are, are, are written out in like, three fretboard positions plus the two octave one. So the major pentatonic two octave. That same shift up there. Um, and uh, finally, there's um, the uh, blues scale, um, or the major blues scale, which is uh, adding in um, a little little chromatic run. So, um, saying like the chromatic scales, where you've just uh, got all of the notes in, but you can say a chromatic run if it just goes up or down by like sort of three three consecutive frets or more at a time. Um, and so that's just adding a little bit of an edge to the major pentatonic. So it's the major pentatonic scale with this fret three added in, which is a B flat note. 
I'll just go over that quickly. G, A, B flat, B, D, E. Do the same on the bass string and then on the uh, middle string you've got D, E, G, A, B flat, B, D. Okay. Now, um, the third, as in the interval, which is fret four, that determines, uh, that's pr pretty much the second most important um, interval after the uh, octave, um, the, the root, sorry, um, because it determines whether the scale is major or minor. If I flatten that, that sounds very minor. Major, minor. Okay. And um, what's happening is um, we're taking the, the, the major third, which is fret four, and we're, we're flattening it. So flattening it is just knocking something down a fret. And that, that creates what you call a minor third or a flat third. Um, normally you don't have them together because there's, they're so strong sounding that they kind of interfere with each other. But in blues, we want um, pe people, you know, in jazz and blues, they call them blue notes, something that's actually out of tune. It's like a little cheeky, little cheeky sort of sidestep um, where, you, you know, you, you're sort of sliding into a, a stronger sounding note. So um, that works really nicely, instantly gives a, a, a bluesy character. Um, Now, straight away, I'm just going into actually a bit of a swung um, sound there because it, it it's just sounds bluesy, so I, I want to play in a bluesy way. And uh, it, it, that's exactly the same idea as you know, switching between the pentatonic and the seven note major. You, you're playing a different way depending on what scale you're using. Um, <clears throat> So uh, down here, um, in the open position again, we've got fret two, fret three, fret four, open, fret two, fret five, and then open, two, three, four. Okay, um, and finally, um, you can also Look at um, kind of playing a little bit, sort of bit, um, it, like mixing chords uh, or the sound of chords into uh, scales a bit by uh, playing double stops by playing um, two two strings at a time. You get that sort of sound. Now th this this has to really go back to the seven note major scale. There's, we, we need all seven notes to be able to create these effectively because all we're doing is we're just selecting um, only notes um, in the G major. On, on the middle string or the the top string. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to play them on, on, on these two and just leave, leave this droning. Um, so the idea of the third um, being really important, um, if we play, play frets five and four, then uh, that is a major third that's 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 starting from g so the root note for these is now on the middle string and and the, the note that we're playing on the top string that's actually the um the either the major or the minor so if i if i play frets five and four it sounds like a major third if i play frets five and three straight away that sounds very minor so I've changed it to a, a, a minor third. So we're going to use these two shapes, either um, adjacent frets, like one fret apart, or two frets apart um, for, for, for the minor. And so we're going to just work up the fretboard like this. So we're going to go uh, start with, so, so we've got G power chord, and then we've got fret two and open. So that's that's the first one. That, that's like a minor. So this is an E note, so it's a bit like an E minor, double stop. Uh, that's an F sharp. That's another minor, frets two and four. So obviously when you're doing these, when you're playing chords, make sure you're bridging round with your, your, your fingers. It's pretty important, otherwise you get all sorts of clipping going on. Um, 
so that's an, uh, an F sharp minor. Um, technically speaking, when we uh, th this is for another video, but w when we actually turn um, chords into uh, sorry scales into into chords, because we can actually have a sequence of seven chords taken from a scale, uh, that becomes a different different chord. It becomes a diminished, but that's not important for now. So we've got E minor, F sharp minor, G. So that's four and five, or five and four. So if we don't say major, then we mean major. So G is a G major, uh, but we have to say minor, otherwise people don't know what we're talking about. So seven and five, that is an A minor. Nine and seven, that's a B minor. That's a, a D major, a C major, sorry, uh, 10 and 9. And then a D major is 12 and 11. Now, because I'm droning this, this low G, they don't actually sound like they're, they're sort of switching chords quite so obviously. It's a bit more subtle, you know, something like... Um, Van, Van Morrison there, you know, that, that, that sort of sound. It doesn't sound particularly, it sounds like a riff, it doesn't sound like it's a, a, a sort of separate chord, chords in a sequence as such. Um, so they're, they're dead effective. Um, and uh, there's, there's obviously nothing to, to say that you have to religiously stick in one scale uh, once you've selected one. Um, if you're, you know, start with a major scale, great, uh, but you can mix it up, you can go to, you know, major blues, you can go to pentatonic. Um, you just get different sounds, you know, so you might have one little lick, one little phrase, which just works really well as a pentatonic, and then you, you go into some double stops afterwards, you know, so. Yeah, so that, that was starting off with pentatonic, then those double stops, that kind of has to be from the major scale, or. So that was going from the blues scale in, into the double stops. Um, you, you know, it, it works. Um, depends on what you're playing over the top of uh, as much as anything. You know, you can sit there noodling away on your own all, all day. And, you know, it sounds quite nice. Just sort of drone out the low low, low G and so on. It's dead effective. Um, but you, you can also uh, practice playing against um, music, um, you know, songs. Try, try and, you know, if, if you know that there are any songs um, that are in a particular key, um, then uh, you certainly try that. Um, you yeah, know, there's there's a few sort of old Stone songs which are in G because like Keith Richards likes to use open G tuning a lot. Um, you got to find the ones that are actually in concert pitch though, because um, I think Hunky Top Woman's a great one, but it's a little bit flat compared to how we're, we're tuned. Um, but um, you can also go onto the internet, onto YouTube, and um, there are some quite good uh, jam tracks. Uh, now, uh, I'm not affiliated with any of these, it's just um, one of my students uh, mentioned one that's quite good, uh, so I recommend it to other people. And um, they're, they're a little bit cliched, they're a little bit sort of formulaic sounding, but it's, it's fine to, to play over the top of just for practice. And so uh, if you go to, uh, there's a elevated jam tracks, if you search for that in um, YouTube, or there's uh, my darn jam track. That one's quite good as well, and uh, they're they're well produced. You know, they're they're a little bit cliched, but that's that's okay. You know, just sort of generic styles tells you the the key uh, plus the style in the title. So we want to be looking for G. Now, if they put in G, uh, it, it's it's more likely than not going to be um, just sort of G G major as opposed to G minor. Um, we could go for G blues. That may well work as well. Uh, often the seven note major scale doesn't work so well with blues, so the pentatonic or the major blues scale will be better. But um, if you just find anything like that and just practice, you know, playing the notes in, in like different positions, get the slide on the go, uh, and uh, just, you know, try and come up with a few little chops and things like that, uh, it's dead useful. And um, it'll, you know, help, help you to um, uh, get used to the patterns, you know, f find your way around a different place on the fretboard uh, and, and develop your own sort of style as well. You know, the more, the more that you improvise, the more that you'll, you'll come out with, um, you know, playing um, that, that is your particular approach to it, as opposed to, you know, just having copied a fantastic uh, Angus Young solo and then you, you always sound like Angus Young, you know, that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. 
Um, there's another one, like I said, for the miner um, on, on its way. Uh, there's, uh, um, there's actually two different really effective uh, minor uh, minus seven note scales uh, and, and then uh, there's the five note pentatonic and then there's the um, blue scale which is the standard blue scale uh, which is linked to the minor pentatonic so uh, we'll cover all those in the next lesson but uh, apart from that I hope you enjoyed it uh, please check out the site download the scale PDFs and we'll see you here again soon on Code of Guitar.